Hello guys, how are you? Okay, our lecture for today is on due diligence review, right? Um, you see, basically what you have to understand from AAA perspective is what exactly due diligence is, right? What does this activity consist of? And you know, how is it different from your audit? But obviously in your AAA examination, uh, the ex you know the examiner doesn't ask you how it's different from audit because it's very it's a, it's a pretty theoretical question right so you don't get a lot of theory in um, you know you don't get a lot of theoretical questions in AAA obviously most of the questions in fact I would say ninety percent of the questions revolve around the case scenario right whatever whatever the case you're given the questions revolve around that okay now um, obviously the first thing like I said is what exactly is due diligence the second is how is it different from audit? What's the scope of due diligence? What, you know, what procedures we perform uh, in due diligence? And in what instances can you do due diligence, right? Because this is all, you know, the, uh, I would say the, the content of it, right? Obviously, like I said, when we uh, look at the questions in the next class, right after PFI, uh, after this class, we'll have PFI. And then after that, we'll look, for, uh, we'll look at questions for both due diligence and PFI, all right? So uh, what you will see is that the procedures are that, you know, that you'll have to perform or the answer that you'll have to withdraw would be or would revolve around the case scenario. Okay. Now, uh, the third thing, obviously, like I said, what procedures to perform and finally, how to communicate the results of due diligence to the users of that information. Okay. Because we, we know that every piece of information has a user. Otherwise that piece is not an information. That item is not an information if it's, if it doesn't have a user. Okay. So in this scenario as well, we have a user. Let's, let's take I, I'll give you an example of due diligence, a very practical example. Okay. First of all, what exactly is due diligence? Due diligence is an activity, right? It's an activity where you gather intelligence or information about a subject matter. All right. So what you're doing over here is gathering information mostly through inquiries and analytical procedures okay guys you know that you know you guys obviously have studied double a uh, or insurance you know what exactly audit is right now by looking at the definition of due diligence or by looking at the uh, you know, the type of activity that it is, you guys can easily figure out the difference between due diligence and audit. Okay. Now the point is what information are we talking about? Depends on the objective that you have to achieve. I'll give you an example, obviously. Okay. What subject matter are we talking about? Obviously the subject matter that the user is interested in. Okay. Uh, the procedures, these are two main procedures that you perform. Procedures what? Procedures and action that you uh, perform in order to gather uh, whatever information you need, right? So inquiry is one procedure and analytical procedures are the other ones. So analytical procedures, you basically obviously have an idea of what analytical procedures are, right? Or analytical procedures basically uh, when you compare a certain item against or you compare a certain item in a, in a relative manner to get or to extract information, right? For example, ratio analysis and analytical procedure, right? So inquiries and analytical procedures. Now, let's take an example, okay? This is a company, all right? This is company A, all right? Let's say this is a pizza company, right? It's a, it's a restaurant, but it makes pizzas right now there's there are two parties interested okay so for example we talk about let's say there's one party interested 
and this this guy is an investor okay you have to be very attentive with this this guy is an investor okay and this guy because obviously it has he has money he wants to take over this company all right he wants to take over this company this over here is us right we are the firm probably an audit firm okay usually audit firms you know take this take these types of uh, you know activities they indulge in these types of activities right so this is a firm obviously this investor is not an ex he's probably a business expert right he's probably a business expert but remember one thing i i'll just give you one small hint i'll obviously expand the entire i'll make up an entire story for you but the point is i'll just give you a small hint yes the investor is probably an investment king he's he's a next you know i won't say warren buffett but let's say he's he's let's say he's a very good investor he's a very good businessman okay but if you if you've ever sat in one of my f7 or sbr or f3 lectures you would know that the business itself right the business itself when it tries to communicate its economic position when it tries to communicate its economic performance it is done through a language called accounting right so yes this investor is a business expert he knows how to you know what supply chains will be will be efficient for him how to put out the product to its customer how to bring in the new products and stuff like this but all of these business transactions the impact of these business transactions the impact of these strategies and the economical impact basically is reflected in the financial statements which for which you need to know the accounting if you want to interpret the numbers or if you want to make sense of the numbers right so he's not an accounting expert that's just one small hint okay and this is i would say that's just one small reason why this investor would come to us and ask us to do a due diligence on this company whether it's the right buy or not okay now obviously in in due diligence we don't say we don't tell the investor so you should go for it so you shouldn't go for it what we do is we just conclude in a way that you know for example and this is this is not exactly an audit engagement this is a type of a review engagement right so if you remember review engagement was basically uh, you know you used to give out negative words limited assurance in your review engagement right now due diligence is the activity that this investor has asked us to perform over this company obviously if the management of the company is ready or the you know not the management exactly the shareholders are ready to sell their shares obviously the shareholders on the other side you know the existing shareholders all right the existing shareholders would also want to do due diligence and because it's a conflict obviously we'll ask them to hire someone else for their side of the due diligence right so i'm just telling you the overview of how it goes now what happens is when this investor wants us to do the due diligence right we'll perform both inquiries from the management and we'll perform some analytical procedures now let's first talk about analytical procedures you know the basics is we're not doing valuations over here remember this guys it's not i'm not talking about we you know we're not drawing up a value for this company we're just do, doing a due diligence whether this company is a right place to invest or not and how let's look at it right so take five year financial statements and analyze what what can you analyze okay fine let's 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 try to understand revenue growth cost structure mainly in cost structure you analyze the operational gearing what's operational gearing 
Guys, what's operational gearing? Fixed cost as a percentage of total cost. That's operational gearing, right? What if the fixed the, within the cost structure, the fixed costs are higher? It would be very harder for you to get you know, a reasonable profit margin if, let's say, your volumes drop, okay? Does it make sense? If you are working at a higher fixed cost percentage, right, uh, if you're working at a higher operational gearing, then automatically, if your volumes drop, you your profit margins will squeeze, right? Now, the third, and this, these are just, you know, these are just examples over here. I'm just, give, I'm just building up a scenario for you so that you understand what exactly is uh, going, uh, you know, uh, due diligence, right? So the cost structure, right? And then you can analyze, let's say, the financing structure. Or let's first talk about all the PL items, right? because you're analyzing five-year financial statements, right? So for example, next you can have efficiency of investments. How do you know whether an investment is efficient, efficient or not? Because if you're investing in, let's say, a property plan equipment and the revenue is generating, so the percentage of revenue, or you can say the turnover against your assets deployed, right? Which is also known as asset turnover ratio, right? So efficiency of investments right you can also talk about or you can also say uh let's say you know the financing structure how risky is the financing structure right so this is these are just the numbers we're talking about i'm coming to I, i'll come to the qualitative aspect of it right or liens right so any contingencies or let's say uh, provisions that need to be taken into account, right? Legal issues or legal cases that need to be taken into account, right? Legal means that, for example, you know, someone has sued you, a customer has sued you for, let's say, food poisoning, right? Or let's say, uh, you know, you end up in a, let's say your employees happen to be, you know, fraud and they're, you know, they're trying to do a tax fraud, for example, which will ultimately land up on you, right, as a company. So legal issues are cases, uh, you know, for example, the going concern of the business, right? Most importantly, there's one very important aspect I would say ability of the business to generate. Now, it's not like you, you will perform analytical procedures on all of these, obviously contingencies, you will inquire about contingencies, legal issues, you'll, you'll inquire, inquire about the legal issues, right? Now, the other things, that you can talk about is the current managerial structure. So when was the last time, you know, the ownership of this company changed? Are these the first hand owners? Were they the one who incorporated the company? Why are they selling the company now? Why do they want an exit from their, from their investment? What's the reason behind it, right? So book value 
of the company, right? Book value is basically your net book value, right? Of net total uh, net assets. Then you, if if there's, uh, you know, if the company is listed, let's say, so the market capitalization of the company. Right, so you can say within the manage managerial structure, how open is the management to change? That's one. Number one. Number two. Listen to me very carefully. Are the current owners of the business of the company? directly involved in running the business very crucial because let's say if i'm not it's you know let's say let's say i'm just an investor right this guy in the you know over here is just an investor for example right and he doesn't want to get involved in running the business obviously the current owners were there running the business they were involved in the operations so you know there was a particular skill that was running the business there was a particular mindset that was running the business there was a particular position that was being fulfilled by the current owners if the ownership changes hands what happens that position becomes vacant right that position becomes vacant that mindset you know in it would be very difficult to replace that mindset okay so that would require a significant amount of change okay so this is these are just a number of things that in a due diligence activity you might on behalf of the investor would want to know and based on the information you get you draw a report right you draft a report saying that these are the conclusions to the findings or these are the findings to the to the uh, to the queries or to the questions put forward right and based on the information we have gathered we don't find any issue in going ahead with the investment or there might be a significant risk uh, let's say if you go ahead with the investment right again limited assurance based on the information that you have gathered okay you're not giving out absolute assurance you're not giving out reasonably high level of assurance which you do an audit all right so this is just an example of due diligence obviously when we look at the questions we'll get to know more about it specifically we we'll, we can easily target it right now from the notes guys i'll show you exactly um you know this is matters to be considered before accepting a due diligence assignment obviously uh before and at the time this investor comes over here we need to assess some things first of all the most important factor that we need to assess is are we competent enough to perform a due diligence task do we have enough human resource to perform this task right um let's say um you know is is this investor our tax client or our audit client or any other relationship that we have with this uh investor that requires independence and uh, during this obviously before during and after this assignment will we be able to maintain our independence uh you know or, or our independence will be impaired as a result of this of this new relationship if we trying to you know take this engagement of due diligence right this the this, the next thing could be for example you know what scope of work you're looking at exactly what type of work you are you looking at a due diligence are you looking at valuation are you looking at you know any other kind of engagement any agreed upon procedures that you want us to perform right next thing could be how confidential or uh, this information should be basically is it like for a private purpose is it something that you want to give to a bank so that you can get a loan to invest in this company what exactly it is like what is the degree of confidentiality right then the obviously we need to know the investors side of the strategy as well right why does he want to make this acquisition there has to be some objective behind it right we want to make this objective uh, we want to make this uh, investment because we want to diversify that could be one reason we want to make this investment because we have a bakery and we make 
you know pizza pizza you know what what do you call that pizza breads but we want to let's say uh you know step forward in the business and we want to step step ahead in you know uh in the supply chain and we want to acquire a pizza company that basically produces pizzas for the shelves and for the restaurants right or let's say we want to become a restaurant now we want to become a retail we come we want to come in the retail sector right so that's a uh forward supply chain integration right so let's say uh you know they say that for for example we produce uh you know cooking tools right and we want to diversify in a way that we you we we come around in the retail sector through this operation through pizza operation not through fast food not through burgers not through steaks not through uh you know any other kind of cuisine we want to come through pizza because that is the most running item so the reason why we would want to know investors objective is because automatically when we do a due diligence we'll have to put out the ob- investors objective we cannot say that okay fine sir um you know this business if you or this company specifically you can look for any other company or let's say you can look for a second option but this company itself is not that profitable and might not be able to generate a lot of profits for you right now without any significant investment right but there are other companies who can but if you want to let's say diversify this is the best because you can build from scratch why are we even thinking about two objectives okay we need to be straight up you know very precise about what the investor has in it in his mind about this acquisition like what what thoughts what what uh, strategies does does he uh, or has he planned uh, with this uh, business right with this acquisition okay then finally when you enter into uh, the due diligence time you start planning the due diligence assignment right you take into uh, consideration obviously there's there's a consideration of fee as well right there's an element of fee that is also involved because you know y- your skill has to have some value right your skill needs to be value that value is determined in terms of fee okay so um you know scope of work clear demarcation of the responsibilities of management and the accountant very important a clarification of interim report requirements if there is any interim report to be given out because due diligence not a process for one or two weeks it takes you know sometimes it takes 6 months to do the due diligence okay uh the element of confidentiality because obviously it's not the partner who will be involved directly in the field work the juniors and the seniors and the you know managers will also be involved so the information exchanges a lot of hands and as a result if it you know if it leaks it becomes a problem okay now so all this is theoretical element right a typical due diligence review could include inquiries into structure and we've already discussed all these credibility of the owners okay remember one thing when you're um uh, you know doing the due diligence for any company right when you're acquiring a company the existing relationships of the company matter the most for example a new company and i've seen this case practically right there's a new company that an investor wants to acquire right the investor only wants to acquire that company because of two reasons number one that investor has a lot of money number two he wants to exploit the relationships of that company with its suppliers and customers both he knows that this company has very good relationships with not just local suppliers with foreign suppliers as well with not just local customers but foreign customers as well that is why i want to acquire this because i think the company is not you know fully exploiting or fully materializing this the impact of the its relationship with these both parties and i can do it because i am a better negotiator i am a better let's say supply chain manager so i know exactly what to do you know and i've also got the money so i want to acquire it okay so this could also be one of the reasons right so current or existing relationships of the company is very important okay because obviously that is like you know if let's say i say that i you know let's say i put a case where you know i say that i have been in business for the last 10 years if you haven't built relationships in those last 10 10 years what have you done if you don't have a repeat customer what have you done if you don't have a regular supplier what have you done right if you don't have 
you know, um, if you're not in good terms with the regulators, if you're not in good terms with the society in which you operate, what have you done, right? You're just bringing out bad goodwill and I don't want to acquire bad goodwill for money. I want, if, if you, even if you give it for free, uh, for, uh, for free, I won't take it. Why? Because it's bad name. Okay. So bad relationships or poor relationships or weak relationships basically bring in bad, bad will. Okay. So it's, it's bad name they're bringing uh, with them and no one wants to pay even not even for free. They want to take it. Right. So, so you have to figure out this element as well. You know, keep this in mind practically as well. When you're doing, for example, you engage in a due diligence activity, right? So these are the extracts from your past exams that what exactly or how exactly could you be tested on uh, due diligence review, right? Um, this, all of this is theoretical. Obviously I would want you guys to go through this before the next class, which is tomorrow, right? Scope of a due diligence assignment compared to an audit. I already told you briefly, but again, like I said, these are all theoretical areas. So these are theoretical areas in AAA and SBR and all these papers, you know, professional papers are there for your better understanding. That's it. Not for you to, you know, memorize it and then go out and write in the exam question because the exam question is purely case scenario, right? You have to understand the case. You have to draw the answer from the case. Okay. So all of these difference between due diligence and audit, right? Due diligence conclusion, very important. Okay. So ISAE is basically uh, standards on other assurance engagements, right? Other assurance engagements is basically other than audit. Okay, because on audit, you, you apply your auditing standards, which are ISAs, right? International standards on auditing. This is international standards on assurance engagements, which is, other, which, which is for other assurance engagements, right? So the form of report issued in this type of engagements covered by IAC 3000. You don't need to know the standard. You don't need to put out the standard in the question, in, in, in the answer, all right? This has no marks, all right? But if you know it, it's good, right? And ISI 2400, which is basically the review, engagement standard, right? Um, the main difference between a review report and audit report is the level of assurance that is given, which I told you earlier. In a review report or conclusion expressed in a negative form, remember I told you negative words, right? The conclusion would start with the word based on our review, nothing has come to our attention. And when I was telling you the case, in the, you know, when I was concluding the, uh, the example over there, I told you that, you know, uh, based on the information that we've, uh, that we've gathered, we feel that the investment is right, or we feel there's a high risk in the investment, and all of these factors, right? This type of conclusion used, used because the nature of due diligence review is that only limited assurance has been obtained. I use this term over the subject matter. The reason why I'm correlating it, what, what I explained is because, like I said, notes are there to assist you in better understanding. But what I'm, you know, what I'm saying is the real deal over here. Okay, because that is what will ultimately help you understand anything within the syllabus, right? So procedures used in review engagement are mainly inquiry and analytical review, right? So in comparison to an audit of historical information, the auditor will, auditor will use a wide variety of procedures to obtain evidence to give reasonable assurance of the financial statement free from material misstatement because reason, because reason being, we're not, eval audit has a very small scope. What? Financial statements. That's it due diligence is done on a business. So you try to gather information on each aspect of the business. I told you about relationships, right? When do we, uh, you know, evaluate the relationships of the business in um, when we're auditing the financial statements other than for customers, which is relevant for IFRS 9 impairment, you know, because you have receivables. Okay. Other than that, when do we, you know, assess it? I don't think we do, right? So the point is, due diligence is as, has a much broader scope. Is It has a much deeper scope, I would say, right? And the information that you need to gather, even though, and remember one thing, because the scope of it is so vast, you cannot gather all the information. There's a physical limitation to it, right? So that is why also we give, we don't give reasonably high level of assurance, which is an audit. We only give a limited assurance. We use negative form of words. Okay, so that is it on due diligence, guys. Obviously, uh, next topic, uh, next uh, lecture is on PFI, prospective financial information, 
and once we're done with prospective financial information we'll move on to the kit questions for the both for both the topics okay great take care goodbye